today we are going to discuss about the effects of water pollution so there are n number of uh, effects of water pollution so first is uh, mainly uh, when we discuss about the water pollution we are discussing about the effects on the aquatic ecosystem because uh, mainly the water is connected with an is an integral part of an equa aquatic ecosystem <clears throat> it might be a freshwater ecosystem it might be artificial freshwater ecosystem or it might be uh, the marine water ecosystem so uh, any water body might it be the freshwater or the ocean they have an uh, very important constituent that is the dissolved oxygen so uh, dissolved oxygen is in one of the important uh, property of uh, water that is around uh, 8 to 15 parts per million that is a saturation level how much water can absorb and uh, how much uh, oxygen gets absorbed in the water that is around 8 to 15 parts per million or 8 to 15 milligrams per liter both parts per million and milligram per liter are the same units but in uh, different uh, ways so any fresh water <clears throat> that is without the pollution that has the fresh water availability around eight to five depending upon the temperature if temperature is more then uh, fresh oxygen availability is less so uh, when any kind of pollutant might it be uh, particularly the organic pollutant which comes from our kitchen wastes which are from our toilets that decreases the oxygen level by increasing the pollution load by increasing the oxygen oxygen demand for degrading the organic material in the water and uh, before uh, we discuss that we uh, uh, I want to discuss this first slide. What are the common uh, transmitted human uh, <clears throat> diseases, or uh, what are the common diseases that can be uh, that can happen because of the contaminated water? First, is the organism type that many of the diseases that happen because of the bacterial pollution in the water. The it may cause uh, typhoid fever, cholera, uh, bacterial dysentery. <clears throat> And uh, for uh, effects like typhoid, it might be having the effects like diarrhea, severe vomiting, enlarged spleen, inflammation in the intestine, and in uh, uh, severe cases, the, the death can also occur. Same like in cholera also, diarrhea and severe vomiting, dehydration is also a uh, <coughs> symptom. And bacterial uh, dysentery is also uh, very common because it all gets in what the uh, gastrointestinal inter system. So uh, also the viruses, they cause various diseases like infectious hepatitis, like hepatitis B joints they can cause. And also parasitic parazoa, uh, amoebic dysentery. Uh, basically all uh, these effects are more or less same, but they are caused by the different types of organisms. So that is the different kinds of organisms may enter in the water pollution depending upon the source of the pollutant. May, it might be from the human source, it might be from the animal source, or it can might be from any industrial wastewater or sewage wastewater. So <clears throat> I was discussing about the dissolved oxygen that is closely interlinked with the eutrophication that I will be discussing after the after discussing the dissolved oxygen. So when we, uh, when we humans, I, uh, I mean to say, when we uh, pollute our water bodies intentionally or unintentionally, so uh, mainly the organic pollutants that gets uh, it, their entry into the water bodies uh, from our kitchen waste, from our industries, from our toilets, it decreases the dissolved oxygen in the water. How that happens it basically when the organ organic pollution increases organic material like that uh, has a carbon content in it when it goes into the water body it has to get decomposed when any organic material goes into the water bodies it has to get decomposed mainly by the bacteria so for decomposing any organic material it needs oxygen 
So when a bacteria start decomposition of organic material, so it will uh, capture, it will use the oxygen that is dissolved into the water. It will not take the oxygen from the atmosphere. It will take the oxygen which is dissolved into the water that I have discussed that is around 8 to 15 milligrams per liter or parts per million depending upon the physical and the chemical properties of the water. <clears throat> So when the bacteria start using the dissolved oxygen of the water, then the, it decreases the dissolved oxygen uh, level in the water, and that leads to the uh, that uh, leads to the effects on uh, other aquatic uh, animals like fishes. They use they use the uh, dissolved oxygen for their respiration, like uh, the some fishes. They can be active in the range of dissolved oxygen when the dissolved oxygen is around 5 to 8 milligrams per liter. So uh, some fishes like trout and salmon that are uh, cold water fishes. In cold water, dissolved oxygen content is uh, a bit more than uh, the warm water. So that's why such fishes, they are found in only cold waters. Like in Kashmir also, the trout is all uh, only found in cold water, like in Kokarnak side, uh, they have also a farm, uh, trout fish farm. So they are cold uh, water loving fishes. So if the oxygen level is around 5 to 8 milligram per liter, then such fishes can survive. But if the oxygen level is uh, severely degraded up to three parts per million or three milligram per liter, then only some species like crabs, uh, they can survive in such kind of uh, low uh, dissolved oxygen. So most of the aquatic fishes, they start dying or they uh, migrate or they go to uh, less polluted areas. So this has very uh, severe effect on the economy also. If the aquatic animals, they will uh, start dying because of the deficiency of the oxygen. So, <clears throat> one of the reason is the what because of the organic pollution. That is because of the sewage water. I am repeatedly saying how the ox dissolved oxygen is decreased because of the organic pollution. Organic pollution first is because of the organic wastes that are directly discharged in our water bodies, like. Uh, from our kitchens, from our latrines, from sewage water, from industrial wastewater. These are the main uh, organic sources of pollution. Second one is you might have discussed or you might have learned before also the case of eutrophication. What is an eutrophication? Eutrophication is basically the addition of compounds containing like uh, nutrients uh, like nitrogen and phosphorus that helps in the growth of algae and other plants. Like in water, there are many kinds of plants. When we uh, release certain kind of chemicals that contains nitrogen and phosphorus. See, nitrogen and phosphorus is very, very important for the growth of plants in water or on the, in the soil. So because of certain pollution, uh, it might be from the kitchen waste because in kitchens we use soap for washing our dishes. The soap contains phosphorus. So this is one of uh, the uh, one of the source of the phosphorus, and also when we apply nitrogenous fertilizers or phosphoric fertilizers in our fields, farm fields like paddy or any other uh, orchards, then because of the runoff, the such chemicals are washed out and they find their entry into the water bodies like our rivers, like our lakes, particularly, and also uh, if uh, from any other industry the uh, industrial effluent is directly discharged into the water bodies that also can be a source of nitrogen and phosphorus. So when uh, there is an addition of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus to the water bodies, it uh, triggers the rigorous growth of plants like algae, uh, bigger plants uh, like macroalgae or microalgae or any other water uh, plants. So they increase their biomass. There is an, uh, if, if you can uh, see the situation in the Dal Lake or Buller Lake or any other water body that is polluted. So there you can find many aquatic plants floating on the surface of the water and also 
they have uh, they are inside uh, within the water bodies so that growth is initiated that growth is triggered because of the high nitrogen and phosphorus load in our water bodies so when there is uh, nitrogen and phosphorus load in water bodies that increases the growth of such plants and when such plants decompose they die in the water body they increase the organic uh, load they or increase the organic matter in the water bodies so that uh, organic matter when they increase because of the dying of the plants they also need to be get composed because of the food chain if you remember the food chain how at every step the decomposers play a critical role by decomposing the organic material that is a uh, law of nature if that will not happen decomposition will not happen then the ecosystem will collapse so at every step we have to recycle the nutrients so bacteria and other microorganisms they play an important role so when they start decomposing and they need oxygen for the decomposition and they again take the oxygen from the water bodies uh, that is dissolved with the water bodies and same thing is happening with our uh, urban particularly urban water bodies like dal lake so besides having the entry of the sewage water domestic sewage water from our uh, drains from uh, particularly uh, in uh, Kashmir, we don't have uh, the such industries which increase uh, the nutrient level in the water, but we definitely don't have the sewage treatment plants. I will be discussing a separate lecture on sewage treatment plants and common effluent treatment plants. So basically, they uh, decrease the nutrient load in the uh, <clears throat> wastewater, particularly sewage wastewater. But in Kashmir, we don't have such kind of uh, network of sewage treatment plants. Even we have 10, around 6 to 10 sewage treatment plants in Srinagar, but they are defunctional or they are run, running out of the capacity. So they cannot treat uh, so high amount of uh, the sewage that is coming to the system. So they directly discharge uh, the untreated sewage into the water bodies like Dal Lake or uh, Jalem. So they cause the increase in organic pollutants and in that uh, organic pollutants and also inorganic, they also uh, lead to the growth of uh, the aquatic plants that also further decrease the oxygen carrying capacity of uh, the water. So that uh, in this picture, you can see how an eutrophication happened. I have discussed what is eutrophication. Basically, eutrophication is the enrichment of the nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus into the water bodies. It can be the source from the discharge of untreated municipal sewage water that I am discussing. Uh, municipal uh, water is treated by the sewage treatment plants. If you have an uh, opportunity to visit uh, any sewage treatment plants, you can see there are many stages how the wastewater is treated, like preliminary, primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment. Uh, and it, every step, different kinds of uh, the pollutants are targeted, how they can be removed. Besides that, uh, detergents, they uh, contain phosphorus also from the, if in on the, rural areas particularly they wash clothes in the water bodies <clears throat> they also leads to increase in the phosphates in the water bodies nitrogen compounds uh, produced by cars and factories and uh, run off uh, from the agriculture they contain nitrogen and phosphorus uh, manure uh, i was discussing about how uh, the manures and fertilizers they can increase the nitrogen and phosphorus contents and uh, run off uh, from the streets, construction works, and also the runoff from the mines and construction of poorly land use uh, sites. And also, <coughs> at certain places where there is uh, the high concentration of uh, the nitrous oxide, they also get dissolved in the water and that causes the acid rain. And that acid rain, when uh, it goes to the water body, besides decreasing the um, pH level of the water bodies is it also increases the uh, nitrogen level in the water bodies. <clears throat> so when eutrophication happens, what happens in the water? 
see this picture shows the it is called oxygen sage curve it is a little bit out of your uh, syllabus but it is very important to show here when any pollutant it uh, is discharged into water bodies it might be from the pipe for example uh, sewage water it is directly discharged into the water body it might be river or it might be lake so the direction of the flow of water is from the left side to the right side so here you can see the dissolved oxygen level is around 8 ppm or 8 milligrams per liter and we can see the biological oxygen demand is very less because the uh, pollutants that enter that uh, enters after the stage see the picture where pollutants are entering into the water body and before that entry the oxygen level is uh, very good uh, and it supports uh, many aquatic animals because the oxygen level is around eight parts per million and biological oxygen demand is very less which we also called bod you might be asked what is the full form of bod that is biological oxygen demand and there is another bod that is BOD incubator. That is different kind of thing. That is called the biological oxygen, uh, op biological optimum development. That is different kind of thing. But uh, you should remember BOD is biological oxygen demand. So this is called clean zone. So where the point when the sewage water or any other waste water is entering into the water stream, that is called a decomposition zone and you can see how this dissolved oxygen drastically decrease start decreasing so here it uh, when it gets dissolved uh, fully into the water then this dissolved oxygen goes up to two parts per million and it supports very less uh, number of organisms like crabs uh, fishes are absent fungi, sludge worms, and bacteria, and these are present in this fly, uh, fungi. So in uh, when the oxygen is decreasing, uh, also you can see the less number of organisms are available in here. This is called decomposition zone, and after the decomposition, when the uh, biological oxygen demand is very high at its peak, the uh, oxygen, dissolved oxygen con uh, concentration is very less, around two parts per million. It's called a septic zone. So after when this organic pollutants gets diffused into the water bodies, it gets uh, diluted or it will be, uh, it might be getting, uh, get it, uh, it might be have been uh, decomposed by the bacteria or fungi in here in this stage, septic stage, the level of the BOD gets decreased and the level of dissolved oxygen start gets increasing and you will see the same kind of organisms in the recovery zone also and uh, later on if the pollution uh, will stop i mean uh, the entry level is only this <clears throat> then it will it will start recovering and it, the clean zone will appear again and you will see uh, the dissolved oxygen level is around eight parts per million this uh, particular picture is called the oxygen sage curve how uh, in any water body oxygen level is decreased bod is increased and what are the various stages like clean zone decomposition zone septic zone and recovery zone and again clean zone and what kind of organisms it supports uh, at what oxygen level in the water so I find, uh, I was thinking that this will be very important to <clears throat> visualize how the oxygen level, decreasing the oxygen level in the water can affect the uh, biodiversity of aquatic ecosystem. And second one is, uh, second one impact is the effect of biomagnification. So biomagnification is particularly when we talk about various uh, xerophytic xenobiotic uh, that called xenobiotic organisms that are very resistant for the degra degradation that are not degraded like ddt ddt means dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane that is <clears throat> particularly used for as a pesticide particularly for the mosquitoes and it was very uh, widespreadly used uh, 
before but it had been banned because of certain uh, effects on uh, the birds particularly besides there are many other uh, pesticides also like bhc benzene hexachloride pcb this is the classes this is the class of the pesticides uh, polychlorinated biphenyls and uh, these these are not uh, these are non degradable compounds when they enter into the water bodies they start like when these compounds enter in this water body because of certain uh, sources they are uh, captured or they are uh, they are uh, i mean uh, they are utilized by uh, these uh, compounds find their entry in certain organisms like uh, small phytoplanktons that are small kind of algae or uh, uh, diatoms um, euglena uh, and the concentration in, in here is uh, when the concentration is very less around 0.00002 ppm it's very less very minute kind of concentration but over the period of time when this algae start using or that using start using the night nutrients from the they start absorbing these uh, nutrients and these kinds of pesticides in their water bodies uh, in their bodies uh, sorry so these phytoplankton start accumulating uh, such kind of pesticides in their uh, cell biomass so this concentration of the uh, this start increasing and here you can see the concentration has increased uh, around 0.0026 ppm so these small phytoplanktons are then captured or they are this eaten by or uh, fishes or other kind of zooplanktons uh, small kind of uh, the <clears throat> aquatic fishes or uh, certain insects so the concentration will again start increasing they, they start concentrating uh, like it is 0.123 ppm. So these small fishes are uh, zooplanktons and then eaten by some rambo, some like small fishes. And again, the concentration will increase uh, around 10 times. And same, these small fishes, when they are eaten by the big fishes, the concentration is again increased by 10 times. And at last, at the hierarchy at the climax of this food chain these uh, birds when they start consuming these uh, fishes they also find their uh, concentration in their body mass so this results in uh, the very weak uh, shell of uh, the their eggs particularly in the birds so this results when they start hatching their eggs the eggs get broken before the uh, they get hatched. So this decreases the population of uh, these organisms, uh, particularly the birds. And this is uh, the very critical example of how can a biomagnification can impact certain species. So uh, up to here, uh, you might be seeing there is no harmful effect of these compounds. But when we uh, see the birds start hatching there uh, they have some uh, kind of uh, the metabolism effect uh, on the production of the eggs the shells gets very weak so they cannot hatch and uh, uh, upon the time uh, you can see there is a decreased uh, number of the birds of certain species so this is the biomagnification how uh, a small amount of pesticide can get uh, magni magnified over the uh, various levels of the food chain. This is called bi biomagnification. And this is the very uh, common in case of GDT, BHC, benzene hexachloride, and PCB, polychlorinated biphenyls. So DDT is having very controversial uh, controversy in case of uh, the harmful, uh, harmful effects in the humans because it is a fat dissolved. Uh, pesticide so uh, no uh, any uh, i mean the visual or uh, significant effects have been seen in case of the humans so uh, there are other also chemicals like uh, i have been uh, discussing that minamata 
uh, disease, how uh, uh, microchloride they find their way into the Minamata Bay in uh, the Japan, and that chlorinated, uh, they also say in the same way, how mercury chloride gets captured in the, the phytoplanktons and zooplanktons and over the uh, tropic uh, levels, uh, fishes and the fishes were consumed by the humans and the humans at that in that case gets impacted because they uh, the mercury have various uh, they cause various disorders in the humans.